हेलो 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 इंटरेस्ट तो बनने में कर दिया तब भी हुई
Good afternoon to all of you who are present in this webinar. This is Piyush Kogari. I represent the School of Design Studies at University of Petroleum and Energy Studies. Today we are going to have a small talk on design. And the title is having an antithesis in it, but we will see how this antithesis is true. What do we understand design as? It is an act of creation. Design is always creating something, some entity by the human being. It is created for a particular need. Design always has a function attached to it. Now, how did this entire <coughs> process of creation start? When did it start? We will have to go a little back into the human history. When did human beings start creating objects? Maybe this is the first beginning a few thousands of years back where he created a stone instrument, an instrument which will help him kill for his food necessities. Where his hands were not enough, he created a device to help him in his functions. This progressed into a range of equipments and tools. Each of these tools would be having some function attached to it which will be sufficing a particular need for the, for the consumer. It is ultimately for the benefit of the human being. Having seen that, can we say that the design or the act of creation is as old as the human civilization itself? Right from the Stone Age, human beings have been creating objects. I think nobody should have any doubt on this aspect. As time progressed and as human beings started becoming more civilized, innovations, inventions, refinements and enhancements continuously kept on happening in every sphere of life. But in the late 18th century, human history took a major turn which completely changed the way life was lived and the way objects and products were created. This most important turn in the human history was the industrial revolution, a result of all the scientific inventions that happened in that era. For the first time, it was during and after the Industrial Revolution that machine came to the aid of man in making items of day-to-day -day use. So far, all items, all products, all objects were handmade. But it was the result of Industrial Revolution that machines came into existence. They came 
to aid the human being these are some very old machines things are manufactured one is a car assembly unit second is perhaps the oldest version of a printing machine you can see the slides industrial revolution sparkled off industries on huge scale and machines produced goods for the human being the handwork was replaced by machine work what was the speciality of machine produced goods this goods were cheaper they had better finish and for the first time in human history the concept of mass production came into existence now why are we talking of all these things because they have a direct relevance on how design developed as a new profession let us see how it happened as we have seen machines brought lot of advantages to the production of goods mass manufacturing became possible because of machines the hand making goods had their own limitations in terms of finish in terms of its price in terms of the numbers which can be manufactured and machines eliminated these shortcomings one of the classic examples is the printing machine which made possible publication of books in terms of lakhs or millions of copies which was not possible before now certain product production processes which were not possible with hand became possible with machines and a new point of view of design evolved in europe this was sometime in the later 18 in the later 19th century creation of x the beauty of a product the beauty of an object the beauty of the created article was getting importance how to improve the function can more functions be attached to the same device can be made it multifunctional and the third aspect was human comfort which we today popularly known as ergonomics so assimilation aesthetics function human comfort in man made creations which would be mass produced better in quality and is cheaper and affordable this was the concept which was getting popular in europe after the industrial revolution and this thought is the very root of the profession of design we know today let us see how we can see a heating device let us not call it a chula or a burner let us call it a heating device for cooking purpose before the industrial revolution a chula the traditional indian heating device was popular it was all handmade and it functioned with lot of wood burning in a geometrically vacant space this was replaced by the gas burner made by the machine here the fluent the the gas became the energy source earlier it was wood so with the change in technology machines made it possible for the human being to create articles of beauty function and ergonomics 
Second example, the second example we see is that of a hand embroidery, Indian traditional embroidery and the way machines help us in getting the embroidered embroidery or surface treatment on a textile design done, on a textile piece done. Now the importance here is how machines have played a role in changing the attitude, in changing the thought process of the creator, of the designer. The usefulness, usefulness of this thought was very soon proved and it started gathering moment, momentum. The, the thought I mean is this assimilation of aesthetics, function and ergonomics. This thought which originated in Europe started gathering momentum and started spreading through other continents also. It was not limited to products and objects only. When we say products and objects, we mean three dimensional objects, but spread to the visual world also. People became conscious, beauty conscious about the type of uh, the type of fonts they use, the type of layout they design on a page, the type of color schemes they use on a magazine. The consciousness or the new thought slowly started spreading. This thought gained pro profound momentum in the early 20th century and by the century it was a, a profession pursued by many pioneering designers. One of the most renowned design of middle or early 20th century is this red and blue chair as we popularly know it as which was designed in Germany <coughs> and we see that how the new thinking of assimilation and exploration and 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 bring into the techniques available for betterment of the product is imbibed in this things were not limited to furniture only even a simple product like a bottle attracted the attention of designers Manufacturers started wanting a good bottle design. This is one of the most popular bottled, uh, bottle design. It's a Japanese design, once again designed by a renowned Japanese designer, Kenji Ekua. This is a soya sauce bottle and it has gained tremendous popularity because of its design. What do we mean by its design? It means the form, the aesthetics, the shape, the color scheme, the material which is used, the production processes which are going into it and above all the comfort to the human being. In the middle of 20th century, USA lead USA produced some leading designers who gave importance to the looks of products and machines. One of the most popular design is the Pennsylvania Railroad locomotive and during those days the graphics of, sorry, during those days, the graphics of the president of USA's aircraft was designed. Both these designs are by a foremost designer known as Raymond Louis. He is also respected as the father of industrial design. Now, this design, the graphics of Air Force One, the official plane of the president of uh, United States, even today, it is the same. 
it has not changed not only products not only furniture not only uh, uh, transportation but the thought of beauty and function and ergonomics also crept into the two dimensional world people started thinking about beautiful and good looking logos which would become strong brand identities people concentrated i mean designers concentrated on the design of the fonts also today typography is a well known profession and a very popular profession also this is how the most popular typefaces known as universe were designed this is a burma shell logo which was designed in the middle of 20th century beat two dimensional world of logo typefaces magazines and recently the digital interfaces or the world of three dimensional products objects or spaces almost all aspects of life were touched by this new thinking on how to create so one thought that emerged after the industrial revolution that creation is not necessarily one contour only not only one design not only one structure there is a lot of innovation attached to any creation and new forms became possible with new machines so this new thought which came after the industrial revolution is the genesis of the profession which we know as design today now just for those who do not know anything about design this is a supplementary information design disciplines are there are various disciplines one is visual communication which includes graphic design now graphic design would mean corporate identity we saw the burma shell logo now that falls under graphic design all magazines design their layouts all newspapers design their layouts this entire world of two dimensional presentation belongs to graphic design photography is one of the visual communication disciplines films is one more in films you have sub pockets like fiction films you have various genre of film you have horror films your documentary films your specialized films your wildlife films and of late since the last 20 25 years one new dimension is added to visual communication and that is digital design digital design means mainly the use of new multimedia what are the new media that have come into existence which use the digital way of communication it could be televisions it could be your mobile phones it could be your games which you play on the computer it could be a simple interface of a web web uh, design or it could be the way you navigate in your mobile phones or through a website all this falls under the digital design category another very large discipline and very popular also is industrial design in industrial design we have product design deals with design of day to day products it could be consumer products it could be transportation products it could be industrial products it could be products which help the industry any type of product is coming under this category we have textile design as another branch of industrial design we have furniture design also 
as a branch of industrial design and ceramic design as one of the important sections of industrial design. In brief, anything that is produced in an industrial way, in an industrial uh, setup is coming under industrial design discipline. The third emerging discipline of late in the last 10-15 uh, years mainly is space design. Space design would include branches like exhibition design, retail spaces. Today we, are, we have already entered the mall culture. Every city has a few malls. Now every dealer in the mall, every uh, stock keeper in the mall would require to design his spaces, how to display his products so that they attract the customers. Now, this is all about retail spaces and there is something known as interior space design also. And this is another huge sector. Interior spaces could be office spaces, it could be home spaces. Within home you can have living spaces. Car interior spaces, today it is gaining momentum. We have started producing specialists who are into the business of designing interiors of cars only. So various specializations are coming up as technology and human uh, facilities keep on developing. I have not mentioned architecture as a branch of design especially because it is treated as a different discipline altogether. But by broadly it does fall under the human creation sector which means one of the important disciplines of design. Now what does a good design school teach? Many of you may be aspiring for education in design because without education you cannot be a professional. What does a good design school teach? Now, a good design school education imbibes, the first thing it does is, it gives you strong innovative thought process. It will, it will give a kick to your mind. The education itself will start a thinking process in your mind, where you think of innovations, where you think of new things. It will gift you with power to perceive problems. Okay. We may see, all of us must have seen a vendor, a soft drink vendor on a bus stand or in a railway train. They have bottles put in aluminum bath bucket, a bathroom bucket and it's sold. Now, lakhs and lakhs of travelers and commuters would never perceive a problem in that. But a design student will be trained to perceive problems. You know, One of my students has, has perceived a problem here. So we, the design school educates you to perceive design problems first. And then you analyze why the problem is existing, how the problem is existing, what are the defects of the existing design and then start innovating on how the problem could be solved. Now this problem solving process is the main asset of a good design schools which is always backed up with necessary technical skills. If I design something and I do not have any answer if I do not have any answer to how I am going to make it, what will be the material I am going to use, what will be the production processes, what will be the sequence of operations, then that education has no meaning. So good design school will always give you the necessary technical skills. Now I do not mean that you will be trained as an engineer, no but you would be aware of the technical 
uh, uh, necessities of your project. You, the student will also have knowledge of material and processes. By and large, what are the type of plastics available, what are the type of metal available, what are the type of uh, other uh, material available, what is the possibility with clay, what are the limitations of plaster of Paris, etc, etc, etc. So in your design career, whenever you face any, whenever you design any solution, you will not face a problem in executing it. So on one hand, we have a problem solving process, which is perception of problems, backed by analysis and innovation. And on the other hand, the design school will give you necessary technical skills and knowledge about materials and production processes. What are the career prospects? Many students and parents come to me asking about questions about what does the education do, how the education is done and what are the career prospects. Now, as all of us would agree without any doubt that today India has almost changed to a buyer's market which was a seller's market around 30-40 years back. Today the buyer is the ruler, he has the money with him and he demands newness in his purchase. He wants products to be changed, some new element to be added at regular intervals, which was not the case three decades back. Premier Padmini and Ambassador Carr are the classic examples of products which survived through six decades without any change. But today can we imagine any automobile without change, the same model going on for even ten years? No way, no way. All companies, all manufacturers have to give attention to the design details and they have to they have to innovate upon their products so the scene in india is developing and developing for the better for designers the most uh, popular venues where a career of a designer gets shaped is advertising agencies who hire visual communication experts, TV channels who hire uh, again visual, uh, visual communicators, film production houses also hire uh, visual communicators. In fact, a few design schools offer film as a specialization also, design of a film. Software companies hire multimedia experts and digital design experts, manufacturing fact companies. Now here the sector is very very large. He could be a small manufacturer or a large scale multinational. These manufacturing setups would without fail require design assistance and today almost all major companies do have design houses in India. They have in-house design offices which keep on upgrading their products in India. Design consultancy firms. Many of the pass-outs from design schools, many graduates from design schools have started consultancy firms. They themselves offer consultancy and they also employ designers from good design schools. And the third branch open is in the academics. Design academics, you can either go for advanced level studies or you can even go into research oriented activities. Design the research is also picking up and it has picked up in the last 10-15 years to a great extent.
right so in a nutshell i have tried to explain you that as an activity design is as old as a human being as the human race itself yet the profession as we know it the profession of design is not even 100 years old right thank you and i invite questions now any questions please I invite questions. Has any doubts? Any questions? I'm here to answer them. My email ID is p gogari p g o g h a r i at d d n dot u p e s dot a c dot i n. I repeat p g o g h a r i at d d n dot ups ups dot ac dot in is what are the prerequisites in general if, if you are going in for a four years course a undergraduate course you need a 12th pass out you should be uh, you should have completed your schools but many design schools offer master's course also master of design course for which any of the related discipline is asked for as a prerequisite it could be uh, bachelor in fine arts it could be bachelor in architecture and bachelor in any of the related engineering branches like mechanical engineers can take up m design in product design those who are into architecture those who are architecture uh, graduates in architecture can also come to industrial design they can very well do in space design also and uh, fine arts graduates can very well go into the masters of uh, design course in the visual communication world like graphic design or or question please one of the question is btech or design what the, what is the specific query btech is a technical course and any design course will not will not uh, 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 prepare you as a engineer if you are into engineering then please go in for btech or be courses let me explain you briefly the difference between an engineering course and a design course supposing i have designed a product okay i have designed a glass bottle I have designed its shape, I have designed its uh, curvatures, I have designed its, uh, uh, its stopper, everything is designed. Now, <coughs> what will an engineer do and what will a designer do? A designer will suggest the contours, 
will suggest the shape, the form. When the such presentations are met, I have done many such presentations. In all such corporate houses, specialists from various uh, branches are present. The marketing people are present, purchase department is there, uh, the other departments are also there. What they will, production is also there. That will, uh, they will be brainstorming on how to implement it. The design, bot the bottle which I have designed, it would be the engineers of the production department which would be saying that the thickness of the bottle has to be these many millimeters or the threading of the of the stopper of the closing device has to be of this specification how to get the texture which is suggested by the designer that would be an engineer's job we designers will not indulge into any type of calculations in fact we would fail badly if we are given any such task I hope I am making myself very clear. Engineering is completely different from design. Engineering is book oriented, its principles are fixed, the rules are fixed, you cannot deviate. Conversely, in design, the wilder you can think, it's the better for you. Few days back I was talking with a student on what creativity is and one of the examples I gave him was just don't think of any practical implications. Imagine that a lion eats you up and you are in the stomach of a lion and visualize how the interiors of the stomach of a lion would look like. It's never possible but your thought process has to go to that extent. You should be able to think as wild as possible in the profession of design which is not the case with the engineering design. Engineering design is very much in a strict, narrow lane. It's a linear thinking and it is mathematics oriented. One question, how is B design different from B planning? Bachelor of Planning is mainly related to the planning of urban spaces, urban rural spaces, planning of habitats. Basically it is habitat. If you gone through the excavations, Harappan civilization excavations, one site is in Gujarat at Lothal, you will see the type of uh, intelligence going into designing the habitats. That is what planning is all about. How do you plan your habitats? Whereas B design is something different. If you are a product designer, you are designing products. If you are a B design in visual communication, you are designing your visual identities. And if you are B design in space design, you are designing your spaces. So design has nothing to do with planning. I mean the, the, the process of creation is there. That is the common element in both. But planning is habitat, habitation uh, concentrated whereas design is a product oriented or a particular assignment oriented profession. One question is, is B design a degree like B tech? Yes, I would agree with you. B design is very much now treated as a degree which was not the case 20-30 years back. But today we have institutes which are offering B design courses. Our university is one of them and our courses are recognized by the UGC. Even institutions like NID, 
from where I I have studied. I was the fourth batch of National Institute of Design. NID has also now started offering B designs courses. Yes, so we can say it is a similar course to B tech, just the title wise, not the content wise. Let us be very clear. Contents of B tech and B E are completely different from the B design courses. One question is related to exchange programs. Yes, we are a growing institution, uh, hardly uh, one and a half years old, and we are trying to formulate exchange programs with other good universities within India and abroad. In fact, we are under the Laureate Group, which has a few good design schools in Europe and uh, Australia and uh, South America. We are in the process of establishing some student exchange programs. It will be a part of our future actions. One important question, what design fields are available at UPS? Let me explain you. UPS has a school of design studies under its banner. School of Design Studies offers programs at MDES and BDES level. MDES is a two-year program, BDES is a four-year program. In MDES, you have specializations in product design, industrial design, interaction design, and transportation design. For the BDES program, we have product design and transportation design. It's a four years comprehensive course and from this July we are floating a BFA program, Bachelor of Fine Arts program in digital arts. Digital arts would, would uh, consist of three main branches. One is animation and special effects. If you remember film Titanic, it was uh, 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 the contribution of Special, uh, special effect designer was huge in it. One is animation and special effects. Second is gaming design. And the third is multimedia design or in today's world what you call as user interface or user interaction design. The, the BFA course is floated from next July. All these are four years. You can see the details on our website. Everything is listed. Oh yes, uh, industry experts coming at our uh, premises. Yes, we, we let me brief you to the education, how we conduct it at UPS. We are not strictly class oriented educators. As fillers in between, we have various short workshops conducted by experts. Something like a two-day typography workshop for product designers. You know, as such, product design has hardly anything to do with typography design. But just to raise the awareness and give them a change, we we arrange such workshops. The normal course uh, education which is not possible yet would help the student in broadening his vision, his or her vision. We organize it as regular fillers during the semester, not only workshops, we have guest speakers also coming in, specialists from the design field, professionals from the design field, plus we have regular outings also. We take students to industrial situations and give them exposure to industries also. So yes, it is very much happening and will keep on happening in future also. Maybe the frequency will also increase. Another question is about the internship. Yes, 
the internship is mandatory in our curriculum i remind you our curriculum is approved by ugc uh, our curriculum has internship as mandatory for the mdes students it is at the end of the first year and for the bdes students it is at the end of third year that is the internship of about 6 weeks 6 to 8 weeks where the student goes to the industry and learns how industry is functioning we also promote them to learn about how how various pockets of industries work in conjunction for the betterment of the total industry various pockets i mean production marketing uh, market research and all other functions how do they work in coordination with each other now one of the salient features of our program is our final project the graduation project which we call which is the last semester of it's if it's the mdes it is the fourth semester for the bdes it is the we prompt students we prompt students we encourage them to go to the industry or any real life situation and solve their design problems either at their campus or at our campus but the problem which they select for the final project has to be reality oriented it has to be a real life problem so the student by the time he passes out enough of exposure to what type of demands are made by the industry or the customer or the client bdes program has started in 2014 let me be very clear our first bdes batch has just completed its foundation here the second batch would be entering in 2015 so the first batch in 2018 so as such we have not uh, our bdes batch has not so far passed out our first mdes batch is just completing its uh, tenure school of design studies started in 2013 so 13 to 15 was the first mdes batch uh, m design program started in 2013 b design started in 2014 so mdes is just coming out and i am happy to share with you that many students from the first batch have already got their placements even before the completion of their uh, final project job prospect of a b design student please be clear your question is not clear job prospect of a b design student as compared to an engineer with m design see employment of a designer is entirely the purview of the employer various institutes produce designers with various specialties now those who want a industry which wants a mixture of engineering and design inputs will obviously go for a mechan of uh, engineering be supported by mdes but those who want designers at purer level at a more comprehensive level the such industries would always prefer a b design student who has done four years in his studies so we cannot uh, generalize in any way on with who has better prospects it is entirely dependent on the real life situation at the time when you are looking for employment but the general standard is this any industry which requires a combination of engineering and design would go for be plus mdes 
and those who only want designers would go in for a four year BS. Can a B design graduate do M Tech? You will have to look out for the prospectus of those offering M Tech uh, program. I am not the right person because our institute does not offer M Tech programs. But if they are accepting B design students, you can very well apply for that. Okay, one question is related to the salary of a B design student and how much he can earn as a freelancer. Now, these are very variable questions. I know of a B design student who has got a placement uh, directly at the Tokyo headquarters of one of the most popular Japanese automobiles. And his or her pay package was something like uh, 38 lakhs. I'm talking of three or four years back. That was a record of its type in the design uh, education field or design placement scene in India. That is what I know of. <coughs> At the other end, we have uh, uh, placements being offered at a general level of uh, uh, B.Tech uh, students and so far as freelancing is concerned sky is the limit it is up to you if you are powerful enough you can deliver the goods and you have good contacts uh, freelancing sky is the limit one of my students in fashion design uh, had some contacts in Dubai one of her relatives asked her to design a frock for her three year old baby and the pics of his baby and the Barbie doll frock. His only demand was the frock should fit perfectly on her body. This is the picture of the baby and this is the picture of the frock. That student was too powerful in her proportions. Her sense of proportion was immense. She designed a frock, sent it. The relatives were very, very happy. From there, the chain started. She started getting orders and within one year, she was owning her own boutique. So in freelancing and in freelancing, you are open to take any type of projects you like also. You may take a product design, you may get exhibitions, you may get uh, logo designs. The, the scene is wide open. You just need good context and efficiency to deliver. In freelancing, delivery is a must. Unless you don't deliver the good design, nobody is going to pay you. So that is that. How has been the placement of MDES? As I told you, quite a few students have already got their placements from our first batch. They have still not completed their final project, but still they have placement offers and they already are placed. Course curriculum, we do not believe in any comparison. Uh, it is individually designed according to our perception and our needs. But by and large, since I am a graduate from National Institute of Design, uh, at that time NID was in its infancy stage. I am from the fourth batch of NID. I have a I have a hangover related to depth of education and the substance offered. So my personality is reflected in our courses. We by and large try to give 
enough of exposures and substance to the student and some of my students have been very very innovative also and that is seen through their projects so our curriculum i i do not think we have ever tried to compare with anyone we have just tried to give the best to the students for us each and every student is very important you have very well gauged us we are relatively new but we are determined we have a firm determination with us and we are determined to do well and we are sure about our substance our curriculum and our delivery moreover we have a very good management backing also the, the management is also equally determined to become a leading design school any other uh, questions please any questions any doubts i repeat my email id p g o g h a r i at p g o patna g for gol g for golier h for howra a for apple r for rurki i for istanbul at ddn dot ups dot ac dot in if you have any questions you can please forward it to me i'll be happy to reply your time Thank you.